I, 19, have a child with a man named J, 19. For background, J treated me like garbage while I was pregnant with our daughter. He didn't come to my doctor's appointments, he would constantly insult and belittle me, and he even cheated on me with his ex-girlfriend the day before I had my daughter. Despite all of what I went through with him, I always maintained a healthy relationship with his side of the family. We stay in two different states, I moved away towards the end of my pregnancy due to Jay telling me he didn't want anything to do with our daughter, but I would call them, send pictures and always kept his mother informed. Everything was great up until a few months ago. I was visiting Jay's family while he was away for basic training when one day, I received a direct message on Instagram from a woman claiming to be his girlfriend. She told me they were getting very serious, discussing marriage and even kids, but she didn't know about me or our daughter, who was four months old at the time, and she needed the truth before she confronted him. Upset and hurt, I went and asked his mother if she knew anything about this woman, and she got defensive with me, stating that he's not obligated to tell anyone about his child and that I should mind my business. Me, angry and hurt, I got upset, and a screaming match between me, her and Jay's brother and Sue's. She proceeded to make up lies about me, saying she was gonna call Child Protective Services on me and tell them I'm a drug addict, that I'm an alcoholic, that neglect my daughter, and how I allow random men near my child. The police were called, and when I got to my hotel room, I opened my daughter's suitcase to find all of her clothes destroyed. She covered her belongings in marinara sauce and dumped some other liquid on it, and no matter how much I washed it, the stains never came out, so I was forced to throw it out and buy my daughter new clothes, which cost me around $250. Jay has graduated from schooling and in the next few weeks, he will be granted leave and will go back to his home state for a tiny bit. He reached out to me and asked if there was any way I could let his parents see our daughter, but after what happened, I told him, hell no. They don't respect me as the mother of his child, and she was going to falsely report me to CPS to get my daughter taken out of my hands. I felt awful about the situation because Jay has tried to be a better father, and he hasn't seen our daughter since she was a few weeks old, so I told him he can either come to my state to see her or he will see her when he goes on leave next. Jay says I'm being an idiot and is justifying his mother's actions, saying I need to move on and let it go. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, and steer clear of these people. Document what happened. JS interest is suspect too. You need to go to court to establish sole custody as soon as possible. I wouldn't let him see her at all, what's to stop him from just walking off with her? You gonna overpower him? Police gonna get there fast enough. At the very least do not let him out of your sight with her. I think you got a glimpse of their agenda from the things they said to you. Not the idiot and go after child support if you already aren't on it. The fact that they wanted to call CPS on you and destroy her clothes shows that they are people to stay far away from. They don't care about your daughter or they wouldn't have done that. You're the only parent who takes care of her, so to treat you like this is sickening. Besides the fact that they're hurting your little girl the most in the end. Not the idiot. Jay has a child, he absolutely has an obligation to tell someone who he's dating what they're getting into. Regardless of his mother's opinion on whether you should tell the girl that is her granddaughter and she ruined all of her clothes. Then she threatened to call CPS knowing damn well her son is a deadbeat and in the military, so he couldn't properly take care of her. She should have thought about a relationship with her granddaughter before she did what she did. When my, 22, little sister, 19, was 14 I promised her I'd take her on a two-week trip of her choosing when she graduated high school. We've spent the last five years planning the ultimate trip, and I've been saving since I made the promise. It obviously got postponed, and now that everything has been open again for a bit, we're aiming to go next month. My sister's boyfriend, 18, kind of sucks. He's great to her, but they are viciously in the honeymoon phase, and the last five months have been horrible for our friends and I. We have a lot of mutual friends because our age gap isn't huge, so I've heard plenty of stories of him showing up to girls' nights because she invited him without telling anyone every time we go to a movie, even if we say don't invite him, he's at the theater when we get there and they spend the whole movie cuddling and kissing. He has consumed every snack in my apartment on multiple occasions with no reimbursement, gets embarrassingly high every time I see him, I smoke regularly, but there's a level of high you just shouldn't get around other people. 
they're literally inseparable, and there's been a few disagreements, because she is very obvious about the fact that we're all backups for when he's busy. Well last week she said he had taken the time off work to go on a trip with us. Didn't even ask, just said it like we'd already talked about it, and he was invited. They expected me to pay his portion and be fine with third wheeling the whole trip. I laughed until I realized she was serious and said absolutely not. She whined that he'd already taken the days off, which I feel bad about, but he wasn't invited. She wouldn't drop it and said she wouldn't go if he couldn't come, so I said fine. No trip. Whatever. We haven't spoken since and I feel like maybe I should have just dealt with it. Our friends are glad someone finally said something, but think maybe taking the trip was a little much. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Honestly, this boy is kinda an idiot. Like he doesn't ask you to make sure it's okay and didn't even offer to pay for some of it. It was a sister trip and if she wants to go on a couple trip they can pay for it. Keep the money for when they break up and then go, or treat yo self. It's your money, do what you want. Your sister is also the idiot in the story too for she's very selfish. Doesn't ask her anything. Did she save up money for this trip? If so, then she can pay for her and her boyfriend to go on their own trip. Not the idiot, it was supposed to be a sister's trip. She's being crappy right now, but I suggest you be the bigger person and save the money for the trip so that when they break up, you can have a sister's trip to celebrate the breakup. I really feel like, if y'all are as close as you seem to be, she'll soon get over this and realize her mistake. She's blinded by her infatuation with this guy, and we know that doesn't last forever. I wish I'd spent more one-on-one -on -one time with my sister at this age, it's really great that you seem to be more on the frustrated yet understanding page with this, as in you've been there, so you sort of getting it, while also not giving in on this. Young love makes us so oh dumb. For what it's worth, you sound like an awesome big sister to have planned and saved up for this. She might not say it now, but from another little sister, I can say you're awesome and she's lucky to have you. I haven't seen my full family together in quite some time, so they set up a get-together at a park today. The family gathering includes me, 22, my brother, 21, my sister, 25, her husband, 29, and their two kids, my dad, stepmom and her kids, 6 and 9, aunt, uncle, my two cousins, 15 and 20, grandma and grandpa. I get there with some picnic items, I brought a quiche and the cups, and see a few members setting up. I say hi and help set up the tables and set the food out. We talk and play games, while the others show up. When everyone gets there, we sit down to eat. I sit next to my dad and get a weird look from my aunt as she says to me, this is the adult's table. To which I reply, I am an adult. She tells me that the first and second generations are considered adults and the third and fourth generations should sit at the kids' table since we don't have much to contribute to adult conversations. I tell her that I can drink, that I drove here, that I parent and have a job, so how am I still considered a child? She says that until I have kids of my own I'll have to sit at the kids' table. According to my aunt, there are eight children, ages 6 22, and eight adults, ages 25 75, so I should just sit at the kids' table since it'll be even, but there is plenty of space at the adult table, and I don't want to be stuck with five literal children. She still disagrees and at this point my uncle and grandparents back her up, so I say screw it, take my quiche back, tell them to have a nice day, and drive away. I get a few texts telling me to come back by my dad and grandparents. I ask if aunt is going to apologize and they ask, for what? That was enough for me to disregard their other messages and calls until I got home, where I am now. I feel horrible that I may have possibly ruined a nice family gathering, but feel my family doesn't respect me at all, enough to say that I am still a child and apparently have the same mentality as six-year-olds. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, and your aunt owes you an apology. She seems to think that people aren't adults until they, what? Get married and have kids. As an unmarried childless person in my late 40s I find that exceptionally and genuinely amusing, and even sort of appreciate that she apparently thinks I'm a kid, but also, she's objectively completely wrong. You are an adult not only legally, but by any reasonable standard, except maybe that your prefrontal cortex still has a little growing to do, but that's whether you're married and have kids or not, so still defeats her argument. You are not the idiot, but your aunt is petty and your uncle and grandparents aren't any better. I'm sure they would have been furious if someone had treated them that way at 22.
not the idiot. Ant is an idiot for drawing that kind of line for no purpose. I would have no issue sitting at the kid's table, 29 with no children, because I love my nieces and nephew and don't see them enough, but you're absolutely in the right to be offended by your aunt's remark. Forcing that line is just plain idiot behavior. Anyone pushing arbitrary rules is in my book an idiot. Let people live and stop trying to control people's life. Your aunt is an idiot. Especially for acting like procreation is some sort of measuring stick for anything. It's basic biology, nothing more. Anyone looking at it as miraculous needs to head on down to the preemie ward and help with comforting crack babies for a while, perhaps gain a little perspective. Not the idiot, but I guess you could have left the quiche. I, 60, have two sons and a daughter. The people in question here are Dave, 35, and his wife Liz, 29. Basically, I have a relationship with Dave but none at all with Liz. Dave was married before and has two children, 11 and 9, with his ex-wife, Cassie. Cassie unexpectedly died in January 2020, about two weeks before Dave and Liz's wedding. Liz and I had a falling out over the children attending the wedding. They said they did not want to attend and Liz demanded they be in the wedding, despite the fact they had just lost their mother and could have stayed with Cassie's parents that day. Dave gave in to Liz's demand and the kids attended, and as Liz says ruined the wedding, when they refused to walk down the aisle and then cried at the reception. I defended my grandchildren's behavior because they were grieving and Liz was very angry that I did not try harder at the wedding to get them to behave, they were in my care for the day. After the wedding, Cassie's parents and my husband and I started taking our grandchildren more often because they did not want to be at Dave and Liz's house. My son works long hours, so they would mostly have to be with Liz. Liz does not like that we pick up our grandkids when they call us, and maybe we are undermining her parenting, but she does often fail to cook dinner, take them to therapy, or after-school activities. She is now expecting a baby in November and will be having a baby shower in a few weeks. I was not invited, but have not told any of my extended family about the issue with Liz or the fact that I was not attending because I feel like my family is also Dave's family and can form their own opinions. Recently, word got out that I would not be there, I'm not sure how, and family started to question. The reason got out there and my family is now very angry with both Dave and Liz. They are refusing to attend the baby shower, and I guess the guest list went from over 60 to under 20. Liz and family have decided they are fine with this because they do not have to pay for as many guests, but now Liz has called my daughter and demanded that we, daughter and I, host a shower for her, and she might stop by if she is feeling up to it, but will come to pick up the gifts after the shower to show the family that we are all on good terms, not actually true. I might be the idiot because we declined, and now that people know we are estranged, I am sort of happy that I don't have to pretend to like her anymore. Not the idiot. She's toxic and she's gonna withhold the grandchild something mighty. Your grandchildren need a safe space, especially as she and your son welcome what will certainly become the high revered baby favor child. They will feel totally abandoned and unwanted, and she will probably demand all the attention beyond the infant and get angry that the youngest is not the priority for everyone. I'm appalled by Dave's actions. His kids have just lost their mother and he expects them to buck up, put on a happy face and go to the wedding. What kind of father wouldn't recognize that his kids needed time to grieve? Dave shouldn't have given in to Liz. He shouldn't have married Liz at all once she started making ridiculous demands of bereaved children. Dave's kids are lucky to have you in their life to look out for them and advocate for them. It's sad that they need that, but their lives would be a lot worse without you. You and Liz have a poor relationship because you care deeply about those kids and are willing to stand up for them. I'd wear that like a badge of honor. Not the idiot, but have a very long talk with your son about this unacceptable behavior. To tell someone you're having a second baby shower is just so entitled. Be prepared not to meet your newest grandchild for a while as she'll be aiming to play her trump card to bring you back into line. I, 23, and my husband, also 23, just bought our first small house. We're both college educated and have good jobs we just have the misfortune of being baby faced and I have a young voice. We often get mistaken for younger than we are. On the night of our third day one of our neighbors came over to introduce herself and bring a covered dish. We both went to the door so we met Gail at the same time. 
When we opened the door she was real nice, smiled, and then she said, Hi, I'm your new neighbor, you know you really shouldn't just open the door to a stranger without one of your parents with you. Are your parents home, I'd like to say hi and give them this welcome to the neighborhood gift. So we told her we are actually the adults and homeowners, and we accepted her gift. She made a couple of annoying comments about us being so young looking. Gail is probably in her late 30s or early 40s, so she's older, but she's not really that much older than us. Since that night Gail comes over every few days offering to help do things. I work from home, so I'm the one usually dealing with this. She does everything from offering to teach me how to cook, how to clean, how to decorate a home. She offered to send her husband over to teach my husband how to use the lawn mower, the weed whacker, how to do small car repairs. Things we know how to do. She even went as far to ask if our parents had helped us purchase the house, they didn't. Because we just changed address some of our mail has had a slow time getting to us. And, unfortunately, one of our important bills didn't get paid. So the business sent us a bill with a great big red pass due on the envelope. We also had a bunch of Amazon packages of home items delivered that day. Gail took it upon herself to come over to offer more friendly advice, and she collected our mail for us. And, she saw the past due bill. I let her in, thanked her for collecting. Gail then lectured me on having a past due bill and deciding to order Amazon. She gave me this big lecture on how we have to grow up and be grown-ups and be responsible adults now that we own a house and we can't keep acting like teenagers. Our parents don't even speak to us like this. I know she's probably just trying to be helpful, she sees two young people and wants to give them some wisdom she's learned, but honestly she's freaking annoying. This evening I asked her to stop coming over because she was honestly offending me by the way she was speaking to me and I'd appreciate it if she'd just leave us alone. Gail got very offended and told me I should be grateful someone cared because when she was a young new wife and homeowner, no one took an interest in her. My husband told me I was too harsh and could have been nicer. Was I an idiot? Not the idiot. You made it clear to her, you're the owners and just look young and she's in her 30s or 40s. She's not an 80 year old who sees everyone as being young. How overboard she's gone is very weird and also intrusive. Getting your mail really pushes this into stalker territory. Same with analyzing the mail and lecturing you on it. Zero of this is her business. Uncomfortable situation but no, you weren't an idiot. This has lifetime movie tones all over it and distance from her is best. Not the idiot, but your husband is also right and you should probably try to make up with Gail while also giving her a better calibrated sense of you as competent independent adults. The thing with neighbors is that you're not just making a moral judgment you're making a practical one too. Was she overreaching, obnoxious, and condescending? Yes, absolutely. But you now own a house and live in a home near Gail. It is entirely in your best interests to try to redirect her desire to be a good neighbor into actually being a good neighbor, rather than trying to start a war with her. Especially if she's this much of a busybody because otherwise, she'll have bad-mouthed you to everyone else in the area before you've even met most of them. Not the idiot. I'd start treating her like she was 150 years old. Speak loudly and slowly. Ask her if she knows where she is at. Offer to help her walk back to her house and hold out your hand. I her walk her and lecture her about safety because she needs to make sure she's safe if she isn't living in assisted living. Ask if her children help her go to the grocery store or doctor's appointments. Berate her every time she's not eating soup because she could choke on solids and they're not easy to swallow at her age.